glad you all came. Um, this is one of many programs of this type that we have here. Um, quick, a few quick things on housekeeping. You've probably seen already there's hot and cold water over here, herb tea and things like that. You're welcome to leave a donation if you'd like. Uh, the far corner of this building has a bathroom if you need that. Um, if there's a big line, go ahead upstairs. There's two bathrooms upstairs, <laughs> one at the end of the upper hall. Uh, what else do you want to know? Uh, did the uh, donation envelope get passed around? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it's always helpful to pay for their gas coming out from Rochester and, <laughs> uh, and things like that. Um, okay, I guess we'll get right into it. Anybody have any questions at this point? How many of you have any contact, have had any contact with uh, UFOs or off planet people? Okay, most of them. All of them. All of them. Okay. Um, well, some people want to talk about it and some don't. I guess maybe after. after <laughs> you guys your, all some saw you. I'm just giving them a hard time. Huh? Did you saw UFOs? Uh, I've seen UFOs. Yes. When I was young, me and my mother saw them. Okay. I've been. In, um, aware of this, I've, having been studying this topic for many, many years. I've spent probably more time over the last 50 years talking with mediums and, and watching channel people doing their channeling, that sort of thing. It's very hard to know, so this is a really good opportunity tonight to uh, see if you can figure out who really is talking through him, <laughs> uh, how valid is the information. Um, and of course, with that, we're, tr we're all trying to learn more about what's being called uh, lots of terms like imminent contact and um, what's, the, what's the common term now? Uh, is it will help me here. What are they calling it when the when the people when the UFO people finally announce themselves to the whole planet? The contact. Yeah. Disclosure. No contact, yeah. Mm -hmm. Dis disclosure. 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 Disclosure is when the government tells the people that they're <laughs> <laughs> in the contact. Oh, oh, time to panic. Where's that foreclosure? <laughs> when the government finally foreign. admits that they've been and keeping their closures. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is probably the biggest cover up in the history of the planet. Right. Uh, it is. That our governments have been hiding from us. So, uh, anyway, I have only met. Jim Charles briefly before, so I think probably you may want to induce yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, Max comes. I guess you guys travel together mm -hmm. a lot, or whatever. Yes. <laughs> well, and Max has his own book he's written on this topic. Yeah. Um, oh, the book. Yeah. You bring copies of it. Good. The book. If you wanted to say something before I. All right. I, yeah, yeah. Because when you started, it was too late to say something. Mm -hmm. So Lakesh, Lakesh will come. And uh, it's a, an extraterrestrial, a blue, he will introduce himself and describe himself. At, well, at least he did last time. There's a second channel, in, second public channel we have, and it's about maybe about 17th channel and I had with Jim in the last half a year. So we spoke with a number of people. Um, he's good channeling extraterrestrials and human spirits don't come, come as easy through him. He doesn't feel very good. So I'm always, you know, it's... Uh, I'm near Jim and I'm making sure he feels good. So if he doesn't feel too good, we will stop or do something. Mm -hmm. I'll put a hand on him so he has more energy. So Lakesh is a funny character. He, he has uh, a technology device. He can switch the character. He can be serious. He can be funny. So he can just turn it down, you know, maybe imagine. But he's physical. He's, he's physical and um, transparent somewhere else, very far from here. He goes through some technological means and it's mediated by our friends, uh, other friends who allow him to go through. They're close, they're somewhere on the orbit. Um, so he is getting a spiritual message, but he also might answer down to earth questions. And some questions he just doesn't understand. So he would, you know, last time he tried to answer the questions he didn't understand, it didn't look too good. So this time he's warned, so possibly he will, you know, say that if he doesn't understand. But, you know, great questions where he really helped me was business, business partners. I say, how about that I just met? And he said, what's his name or her name? And he looks at his database, kind of connects to them, and he says, you know what? He doesn't want to listen. Let him speak. 
And when he speaks enough, he will trust you and listen to you. But you have to have let him speak first, or things of that sort. Or like this person, you know, he's not engaged. He's very nice, but he's, his mind is elsewhere. That was very helpful. I mean, that was great help, you know. And that person, which I was very suspicious, he said, he is brilliant. And, you know, that changed the thing. So we can actually ask questions about it. Yeah, will invite, yeah, he will invite questions. Last time he invited questions very mm, clumsily. He said, questions? And people didn't understand what he meant. But he <laughs> meant, you know, no questions. <laughs> okay. Well, so, yeah. So yeah. next, uh, this time he probably would say, now please ask your questions. And, you know, last time the questions were, you know, food. He had some nice advice on food, ecology, some nice advice on ecology. And some other things, but you know, he is very knowledgeable about exopolitics. So, and he's he's permitted to say only that far. If he says what is not permitted, they will turn him off. You know, there, there is a gentleman somewhere around who is, you know, first we call him guard number one. Now he knows his name, but you know, guard number one is making sure he doesn't say anything which is a secret, so he he can be turned off at any moment. But you know, <laughs> he knows, so he would be he would say, I'm not allowed to say. He he knows that now. Initially, he was trying to whisper, Max, <laughs> Max. <laughs> now, now you. Mm -hmm. Well, um, that's a good beginning. <laughs> I, I've, I've not been doing this very long. I've been, um, I wasn't even aware that there was such a thing as channeling until I met Max, actually. So, um, one day we were, I was raking Max, because we have a weekly appointment for Reiki. And... I said, I feel like we're not alone. And he went, mm hmm. Because, you know, when you're in a Reiki state, you're sort of relaxed and you're like that. not really thinking too much. You're sort of enjoying their treatment. And I said, a few minutes later, I said, Is it aliens? And I was sort of being facetious, but he sort of said yes. So, several weeks after that, they started teaching me different Reiki methods that I had never known before. So it was like, while I was Reiki Max, there was voices in my head going, do this, now do this, now breathe, when you breathe, make sure you breathe up through your chakras and out through the crown and make sure that your heartbeat is in, in time with the pulsing of your hands and the energy going into the body. And, Several different things of that nature, which were just foreign to me at that time, because I had only been doing Reiki for about a year at that time. And they were getting in touch with me. So I told Max about that. And I think it was the week or maybe even the week after that, he started asking them questions. He said, would you mind if I asked him questions? Something like that. I'm not sure what he actually said. But they started answering. And first thing I said, you know, I'm applying to visit you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and they gave him some tests. I'll interrupt you for a second. Uh, Lakesh said somebody else will talk also. So they arranged that not only Lakesh speaks today. Oh, I don't know who. We don't know. They, they did the arrangement. They don't notify me ahead of time. They just ask if they can come in. Um, and they only allow, I have a guardian that only allows good, positive, white light spirits, godlike spirits, or, uh, or entities to enter. If they are not of the light, then they cannot enter. Because the name of my guardian is Fission, like went Fission, but that's his name. And he guards against anyone that might try to harm me. So that was put in place after someone tried to harm me once. So, um, how did they let you know that they wanted to start channeling through you? They really didn't let me know. He just said, can I ask him a question? Oh. And I said, sure. If they answer you, that's great, you know? So I actually gave them permission at that moment to channel through me. And when he started asking questions, just they just started talking. It was the first person that talked, first alien talk, was Dizdu. And he was he is in the saucer that's around the earth right now. So Lakesh didn't come till later, but he's more colorful in many ways. <laughs> he says more, he is more 
he is from a planet that's very neutral, whereas these two and the others are from uh, an alliance, and so they have lots of secrets that they're not allowed to to divulge. It's a very big bureaucracy. So where uh, Lakesh is from, he's pretty much allowed to say what's on his mind, except he's not allowed to divulge any of their secrets. So that's where it, what it comes down to in the long run. They stop him if he's going to divulge anything, but they trust him pretty much. So um, what I mean by pretty much is they do stop him sometimes. And yeah. he'll be in the middle of saying something, and all of a sudden it'll be like, gone. So we've had that happen a couple times. So we had an angel visit. I love the angel speak. Angel is amazing. Um, he, he, angels are, come through Jim much easier. Human spirits don't come very well. The Jim doesn't feel good. Human spirits are different. I I do better with Native American spirits than I do with regular, average spirits. For some reason, they come through better, but. Um, I, that's all I can say. I really don't know why, but when uh, regular spirits try to come in, it seems very difficult. It's like we're not on the same wavelength or something. It's like uh, it's it's very uh, confused at times and very soft spoken at times. I think you were saying it didn't. If you listen to the recordings, he records every one of our uh, channeling sessions so yeah. some of it comes through really all friends soft. They, they so I have the recording on the phone and sometimes if something went through that they don't like you know that the lines they go to my phone and make the file blank the file is still there but it's blank I mean they don't leave many many proofs but you know that's one of the proofs I have you know yes. if if there was a crisis at some point up there you know just panic more like than crisis, panic and it went through the channeling, and no surprise later, you know, it was black. They do happen to erase some of our recordings, as he found out. Especially if you're, there was an emergency and they had to leave, and they don't want anybody to know that there's an emergency or any proof that there was an emergency. Uh -huh. And um, what the things that they do work on are the weather. They help maintain our weather. It's so that it's not as destructive because there's too many things going on right now on Earth that are causing the weather to be really bad. We have very high seismic, uh, seismographic things like the thing over in Japan, which actually knocked our um, axis off a little bit. Mm -hmm. And also it's changing the weather. And so they're here to help us get to the next level is basically what they're doing. They are um, saving humanity because the, every now and then the Earth flips over. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Every every now and then, yeah, the there's been they do. They yeah, reverse. they flip. Yeah, nobody notices. It just happens. <laughs> <laughs> but um, when it flips over, the big flip from one side to the other, um, the whatever is alive perishes on our planet. So they want to keep us alive because we're closer now humanity-wise than ever before to becoming part of the galaxy, becoming part of their communication system and alliances if we want to become part of that. So this is, um, Earth is under a lot of interest to them right now. A lot of different species are interested in Earth because we're at the next stage of our evolution. Have you noticed that Reiki is becoming more popular? Have you noticed that the Far Eastern uh, mystical religions are becoming more popular? Have you noticed that energy is stronger? This is part of human evolution, is that we live in this uh, magnetic field for so long, we're coming, becoming part of it. You know, our energies are becoming part of a different kind of energy. So we are being elevated, and it's called the Ascension. And I know you've heard about it, and I know some people say, oh, it never started, I was so disappointed. Don't be disappointed, it started. And it started when it was supposed to. The reason why you don't know about it is because it starts really, really small. When you take a beam of light, from a flashlight or something, and show it out, it comes out like this, right? 
This is how the ascension is starting with the beam, uh, like a small molecule of light. And as it moves, it brings more people into it. Do you know what I understand? It, that's the way it's going to happen. It's not going to zap the world and they're all going to be enlightened. It, we are the beginnings of it and we have to uh, be responsible for that because we have to uh, bring other people with us. What he suggested is that we knit ourselves together individually as a group of enlightened people and bring each other up when they're down. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, as we lift each other up, we get higher vibrations. And so we need to keep that moving. That, that positive movement will gather people. And, and you will see that your intention on learning who your friends are and what their light is made of will bring them into a closer bond with you and then you'll be able to lift them up as well. So uh, that's just one of the things he was teaching us. But now I'm going to let them talk. So if you would uh, put yourself in the white light for me. I mean, all positive intentions, godly thoughts, nothing negative, please. That really interferes. But, um, and that I'll do a little concentration. Hopefully, we'll see who comes. And I pray someone will. But um, I feel a lot of great energy here. So I, I know that they're attracted to that. So where I'm sitting is just phenomenal. This is just a phenomenal spot. It just I can feel it coming up through my feet. So it's wonderful. So let's just keep an open mind, keep a positive attitude, think about the light or positive things and I will do a little concentration and a little breathing. I will be brief. Hello. There is healing in the light, and you are of the light. Follow it. Keep yourself balanced. Keep each other balanced. There is a way that on your own you can do this. Bring your fingers together like this. Does everyone know Reiki? Some yes, some no. Teach each other Chokurei. Do you know Chokurei? Yes. 
put the energy here. If you put your hands together like this, it is a circuit of your body. Your reflexology is inquired, required for this. Do your self-healing with a choku ray on these circuits that are connected here. And your balance will be restored and energy passages will open. You will feel it. Do you understand? This is something that is not taught. I am Gakil. I am from the Nine Realms. I have come from God, who is many, and many is God. He has many names and many hats. I will leave you now, but I needed to instruct one moment. Blessings to you all. Thank you. Greetings. Pakesh? Yes. Hello, old friend. Hey, hey, hey Max. How okay. are you? Good. How are you? Very nice. That is a nice crowd today. Yes. Very nice energy. Yes. I heard Gahil was here. Yes. Yes. Very briefly. And he gave us blessings and a teaching on. You are blessed with him. He is. Yes. He is rare. What would you like to know today? You want to start with questions or have any message first? I have no messages today. I am open. Please ask the questions if you like. I would like to enlighten you in any way that you would like to know. Are you part of a council, like a, the Galactic Council, or do you come here on your own? My people are not part of the Galactic Council. We are neutral. We do give advice to Galactic Councils if they wish it. But we are neutral. We do not become part of any war, defenses, or any part of any political societies. We have our own beliefs our own culture, and we must be respected. We have our own way of life, and it cannot be interfered with by alliances that teach different ideas. Our people have survived many, many hundreds of years with this same philosophy, and it has done us well. We have very little crime, much love, and much creativity. But no, we do not involve ourselves with others other than to speak and talk and interact. But we do not become alliance partners. No more questions. What is the name of the planet you're from? We do not give that out. How many planets do you occupy? We are occupy four planets at this time. Trillions of blues and four planets. Yes. Three minutes. Yes. How is it possible? There's much room on these planets. Are these big or just multi-level? They're both. They're big and they are multi-level. Or they go through each other. You are kind of transparent. Fourth dimensional, way? yes. Oh wow. And you you glide, right? You glide in the in the planets. I the part of society I belong to, yes, we do glide. Oh, I see. There are 
different parts of our society as there are different parts to all societies. Some choose not to glide, others choose to glide, some want walking, some want running, some choose to not be moving at all. <laughs> Their mind moves though. Do you understand? Yes. Please go go ahead. Are the are the angels aliens? No, the angels are part of a spiritual culture. They are part of God culture. We are of the universe, the galaxy. We are just part of the world with you. But angels, no, they have a higher creation. They are of a higher creation, I should say. And then that, that all multiplying and proliferating, right? Do, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Okay. Mm -hmm. So are you currently living on a spaceship near Earth? No, I do not do space travel. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I'm comfortable where I am, and I have means to get here without space travel. I guess it's a form of space travel, but it's not like a, a little ship like they do with... I come here in spirit only, but you can see that it's a little more than spirit. It's almost like holographs, but yet... I can see you, you can see me, you see Jim, that's all you see. It's it's silly, isn't it? But it's quite effective for me. <laughs> How many people do you go to? I have three people. Three on there? Only three, yes. Only three will accept me. All, all males? No, there is one female. Do you go to other planets and other... I'm not interested in other planets. I know all about them. Your planet is extraordinary right now. That's why I come here. I want to learn. And I want to teach. Because other places you go, they have their own ways. and You are more open. You have more ways of reaching out. You have no telepathy. You have deeper emotion. We tend to internalize our emotions and leave them go because they're just not necessary at times. But here, your emotions are necessary at all times because that's how you communicate. We, as telepaths, can face each other and know many things. Of course, there's a part of us that we keep hidden for our partners, our mates, which we do have. But when we are socializing, we can speak directly to you, and you will know our intention, our thoughts about that subject, and we can enjoy each other that way. Whereas your enjoyment pattern is so much more in-depth. You have so many more, what's the word, idiosyncrasies. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> and you are also much more individual. And we tend to be a little more alike. But that's not bad for us. But it's fascinating to me that you are so different. Our society is quite happy the way it is, but I think your society groans for growth. You reach out for it. You grab on to things that are unknown to you, and that's so refreshing for me. Do you understand? We reach out into the universe, and we see things, and we go, oh yes, we'll study that for a while. But you are learning so much right now. Your lights are so much changing within. We are 
in awe of you in many ways. Does that answer your question? I, I babble. Do you have a three-dimensional body similar to ours, or are you just in four, fourth and fifth dimension? I do have a body that would be considered corporeal in my society, but it can go through a door or a wall, or we don't have doors. You have doors. We don't have doors, but we do have portholes, places that it's easier to go through than others, if that makes sense to you. I mean, it's less dense, so we, we can go through that less density, but it's, um, we find it uh, that the fourth dimension, that is the added dimension, is that we can be solid or we can be light. We is call that it light. What astral projection feels like? Yes, that would be a very good association word, yes. Yes. So you're three dimensional, but you kind of add a four dimension once in a while? Yes. There's more movement to be had in the mind than there is in the physical. Oh, yes. We've, we have long been mentally move, movable, motionful, whatever the word is. Motionful, motion accelerated. Okay. Yeah. How, is, how is your society based? Like, for us, you know, there's oh, men, women, we get up, go to work. Yes, oh, that is a really good question. I like to talk about my society that way. Because we are an intention society that moves forward, and someday you'll be like this, I'm sure. You'll be similar to this. We have degrees of accomplishment. Everyone is given an idea that they would like to, to move forward with. You know, your favorite thing. As a child, your favorite thing, what that was. And as you grow, you get other ideas of what you want to be. But as you accomplish what you want to be, in one thing, you get promoted in society. Do you understand? And then, as you get to that level, then you can move to another level, because then you will have some other thing to learn, so that you will be promoted to another part of society. And this way, we get to know a lots of parts of the society because we get to learn it and each other. And there are some contexts that are, yes, stronger than others. Yes, yes. We have friends. And we have entertainment. And some of those things that people like to do are entertainment. And as they become accomplished at that, they move to another level. Do you understand? And then there's the lower levels, the, the, the lower vibrations, if you will. The lower vibrations we help. As we become accomplished, we get to work with the lower vibrations to help them come up. Just like we're training you to be one with each other, to bring each other up, we do the same thing. We become trainers and tutors and whatever you want to call them to bring up those that are young and those that are have the, the need to have counseling more. Because we had our counselors, they, and then we become the counselors. And then that becomes a multifaceted part of our society because not only are we connected to moving up, but we're connected to bringing up the lower. It's a beautiful thing. So where do you basically live? other than coming into telepathically someone's body. Oh, I, we live on our planets. Uh, we have housing, just like you do. We have our own, um, what you might call establishments. We move, I float from one place to another, and I can stay stationary, and I can communicate with other worlds. Believe it or not, the galaxy is a really small place in some times, because we are permitted to send out communications to anybody that we want to. And they are permitted to come back. Even though we're not in alliance, we get like a newsletter, like you would get on the 
internet. You would get your news from the internet. We get news from the galaxy and very similarly. We get from that. So, what was the question? So you, so you basically live on a planet? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, you live on a, a different planet. Yes. You live on a planet. Yes. It's in the galaxy. Yes. Somewhere. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. They were all yes. And it's just one dimension up. Yes. One dimension up. Just like the, the spaceships that are in your atmosphere, you cannot see them. Why? They go to a different dimension. To They go to the fourth dimension and become undetectable to you. Is that where you are? Fourth? I'm Basically? Is that where you live, where your planet is? Yes, I'm in the fourth dimension, but right now, yeah, you're right. I'm in the third. Right. And you know what? I find it refreshing. You know why? Because I can't walk through anything. <laughs> it's like I have to use the doors. I have to use... It, it, it's a whole new set of rules. It's sort of exciting. But, but the other thing is, is I get to feel what people feel inside their bodies when I go inside them. And... That's a whole new thing for me, and it makes me very excited to feel what they feel and know what they know and, well, don't always know what they know. I have to ask them first, but I'm not allowed to go into the brain. That's sort of a no-no unless you ask, so, um, but I go in and there sometimes, but. Uh, so Jim has given you permission? He's giving you permission to be in... Well, he gives me permission for a lot of stuff, but not everything. But we'll have to talk about that some other time. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Let's keep it clean. Keep it clean. <laughs> I have a question. About yes. When we are on dimensions, so these human colonies, uh, are they in third or fourth dimension? I just realized I don't know. The dimensions that you speak of are in the third dimension. The yes. colonies? Yes. They are all in the third dimension. All yes. in the third. So humans don't third. travel to the fourth yet. No, they do not. Can can we travel to the fourth? You cannot at this time. Can then some of the humans travel to the fourth? There are some humans that can, but not all humans can travel to the fourth dimension. They are not equipped for it. What percentage of humans can travel to the fourth? Hmm, I never asked that question. Just a moment. Probably two percent. Thank you. You you invite your questions yourself. Guide guide the conversation. Ask for more questions. Um, do you have a monetary? Do you have any monetary value? No, and we're working on having you not have a monetary unit. Of, well, not me personally. Mm -hmm. right. But well, that's a long story. Should I tell it? Sure. Um, we do not have a monetary unit. Our our. Uh, monetary unit is privilege. And as we work up through the, the units of knowledge and growing, we are given privilege. And it costs no money to do anything. We've learned that money becomes more of a negative thing than it does a positive thing in every society, every single society that we know of. Money is negative. It becomes a source of power. It becomes a source of greed. You, 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 uh, you believe that monetary, is this a reward? Are you allowed to come here because you're being rewarded for something that you did? Actually, that is a very good question, and the answer is yes. Thank you. I am a privileged person on my planet. And being a privileged person on my planet... I can come to you. I do have many coaches at times. Sometimes they're not very good. <laughs> but sometimes they are. They need mentoring then. Well, they don't know mankind. They don't know the human condition. They think they do. I know it better being here. But they go by their own condition, which is very logical since they are in their condition. So it makes it harder for them to understand your condition, but I am starting to learn. I'm starting to learn. I'm just beginning to learn. 
You were on the question of money. Ah, yes. Money. Bad thing. For we do not need it. And we can run our society without it. Now, what I have to tell you is about El. El is a spiritual community. You've heard of Elohim, probably, or El Shaddai. El, these are religious terms from your ancient past. El, it's just El, E-L, on your planet. They are the community of finance, okay? Or what, what I wouldn't call them finance. What would you call them? Commercialism? I don't know. Capitalism? Something. Huh? Capitalism? Well, they didn't. See, they're trying to get rid of capitalism. So, uh, this is what they're going to do. They're going to eventually crash the, the markets of the world so that they can bring about a change in your, the way you do monetary business. Okay. And this has been in the process for many years, and you've seen many hints of it. Government shutdown. Um, <laughs> That, that really isn't a big part of it, though, really. But there are other things you'll see in the Middle East, for example. There are many indicators over there that will tell you that, the, the, that eventually the governments will crash and monetary will be raised as something else. It will be a different society when that happens. However, Unfortunately, the United States will be hard, one of the harder ones hit because they're greater. The greater they are, the harder they fall. If you can remember that expression, I've heard that a couple times from your people. So, but that is their plan. They have a time period for it, but I won't mention that. So, you should. Really? Yeah. About 2027. So, a lot of people would say, oh, they couldn't possibly do it in that amount of time. Oh, yes, they can. <laughs> so, they can do it. Give us something positive. I mean, it's scary. Give yeah, it us, is. Give us a way out. Um, you will have to talk to Elle about that, because they're in charge of that project. That's not anything that I deal with. I just know about it because of what they tell me and others on their community. How did other civilization get through that? They will. How did other civilizations in the okay. universe get through it? How did they get the, through it? Through the crash. Um, How did yours do? We got through it by, by understanding who we are as individuals. We, you see, we have telepathy, and that helped us get through it very much. Because we could see the positive side of it all at once, in a way, um, because as soon as the positivity became the base, we moved through it. But like this, we all had to thread ourselves together like a big mesh, because the positivity is what kept us alive. And we're a very positive people. Of course, we weren't always great positive people like we are now. We, we had our times when we were young, primitive beings. We weren't like you. Um, we don't have as many toes. <laughs> we don't have as many fingers. We don't have as much... Well, our atmosphere is very different. I couldn't breathe here other than being in this body. This body breathes, and I understand that it needs what it needs, but I could never survive here. I'd need a space suit, and even then... How, how long ago was the crash, economic crash on your... Our crash? Oh, probably... Well, actually, it was... 487 years ago. How many blues survived? Our percentage was? 80%. In regards to Revelations, it's a book in the Bible. Yes. It's very spiritual. Yes. It, it, uh, there's a quote. It says, um, he'll come like a thief in the night. Correct. And there's so many discussions 
among scholars here on earth, um, is at, at that point, will that be where the mass assumption physically it occurs? That, would, that is a very good question. And the answer is yes. You call it a rapture, but it really is more of an ascension. However, not everybody will leave the earth at that time. There will be ascended beings that have to stay. And you probably know why. It says that in the Revelations as well. So, um, to get the stragglers. To bring the rest of you, not the rest of you, but the rest of your planet into the light. So we need light workers even after the ascension, because not all will ascend at once. Okay? And that is a very good point. Very well, very lovely. There's, there's talk that uh, some of us are able to enter at will other dimensions. Now, you know, I personally spend a great deal of time meditating. And I've studied many different techniques to, to do that. And it sort of feels, I imagine, like what you're feeling in here. Yes, in there. That, I just never thought of it that way. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Yes. That's, yeah. So I really am doing that. It's not yes. just in my mind. <laughs> well, sometimes we have to wonder, well, well, you know, you know when, you know, during when, meditations, they become super realistic. Well, you know, when Jim first started channeling, he thought I was his imagination and he was going crazy. So, mm -hmm. um, I had to convince him that I was actually real. Like, we will do those. I will. Um... <laughs> I made some physiology things happen. I talked to Max about things that Jim could never understand. And so did these do. And to and several to pair. And they talked to through him about things he did not know. And that convinced him that, okay, there must be something to this. And now we are good friends. In a way. Ask <laughs> more questions. Invite more questions. Yes, Invite I'm ready for questions. Invite. Um, we are still a warring world. Yes. How, how do you view that as we are still a, a warring world? I see it as inevitable in your con present condition, as inevitable because you are human. You, this is how I see it. You are a cylinder, whereas we are a community. Um, you have to communicate with words and gestures and touches and things of that nature. We can communicate like this. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, there is so much misunderstanding in your culture because you cannot have this. Yeah. You hear and the brain decides what that meant. Much of the time, it's wrong. Much of the time, it's wrong. When a word, okay, oh, you have these, do any of you use text messages? <laughs> How often are you misunderstood on your text messages? Mm -hmm. Indeed, mm -hmm. indeed. This makes you a cylinder. Not, not communicating like this, one in one. You are communicating from outside. And you cannot possibly be at peace while you're communicating from outside. So I see that as the human condition, as you are. When you learn to communicate, which some of you are learning to communicate, telepathically, we are training some of you that are of higher vibrations, not I, I'm not training, but there are people, there are uh, species that are training, Yu is training, uh, I have to be correct because Max will correct me, um, the Yu will um, be training people with telepathy as time goes on so that we can interface and that is the only way that you can become part of the galaxy, is if we can interface with you. And that is happening. 
and we see that as part of your evolution right now, that is one of the next steps in your, in your world, is slight glimpses of telepathic knowledge from each other. And as that becomes more evident and more prevalent, the hatred and the, the distrust and the misunderstanding will start to diminish. Not with everyone. There are those that mean harm in the universe, in your world. But when you know someone's intention, when they speak, if you can just tell what their intention is, that's all you need to know. That will be your first step. Knowing intention of someone else. And then you will know if they are good or bad and if you should associate. If you should communicate. You will start becoming telepaths in the very early stages. Does that make sense? Yes. Sensing good and evil in others is the first step of telepathy. Do you see um, us becoming telepathic? Yes. It will take time, but there are people on your planet that are already telepathic. Those people have been chosen to communicate with aliens, and why not? They, they transfer their human condition to the aliens so that the aliens can understand us, you, us, everybody. So, I don't know how to say it. Yes? Can I ask a strange question? Certainly. Maybe you've experienced this. I, <clears throat> I, I very recently, even this year, have people telling me things that would make me but, um, have to go, okay, this is not a good situation, and let them go. I mean, people are literally telling me, telling, and it's not that I judge them, but I think that it's something or God or something, having them say, I'm such and such, so I can go, okay, that's not good for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, pe people that it would, I wouldn't have asked them, I would automatically accept them, and it's all different, can you work, neighbors, whatever, and it, I think it's so that I can kind of um, withdraw, not withdraw from the world, but withdraw and like walk in a sweeter path. Yes, you are staying within the light that you see. You are staying within the intentions of your good nature, yes. And it's okay because they're, they're the ones telling me, I'm not judging them, but they, rather than knock on their door, I'll go, they already told me they're not right. appropriate. For as me. long as you are not discouraging them away from the light, right. you can maintain a distance and still send them the light. Do you understand? Well, I haven't quite got to there. I'm working on that today. You will know. Uh -huh. You will know. I don't know what to do about that. Part. Because there are some that when they walk into your presence, they bring their energy with them. Okay. And some of it is not good energy. No, I've always loved my name. But, but, now it's not a, but now it's not like a time for that. But your energy will conquer their energy, uh -huh. you see. You by so well, they'll come and say we're hungry or we want to sit. If they're coming and saying things that are not okay, just right, then allow you must, them to... Yes, you move away, but you leave your light. Oh, okay. Yeah, how do I do that? <clears throat> by saying, excuse me, and being very gracious, and leaving love instead of saying, oh, oh I can't say, stand oh, this anymore. You. Yeah, okay. You leave your... Well, Intention. today when I drove out to here, I sent blessing to my neighbors in my yes. street. Is exactly. That That's the kind of thing. When that you leave a thing. situation that is harmful to you, you must say, I must go, but blessings or love or whatever to you. Mm -hmm. And leave it with them, knowing that you are in a good place, but they are not. That way they will want to be more in a good place. At least... Logically, that's what I would think. But not all people are logical. So we buy that. So you're one logical person in this room. Yes. <laughs> Do you understand that though? Yes. Leave them with a good, a smile. 
if nothing else. <laughs> that is a challenge. Yeah. But you know, it's hard to love someone who's hurting you all the time. It is very hard to love, and you know, it's almost impossible. No, I've I, no, I no, no. I, I've loved people who should have been shot dead. Yeah. My, it's a new thing for me to walk <laughs> away from them. Shot dead? I do. Oh. Sorry. I'm <laughs> I mean, I mean with the. That happens once every 400 years in our culture. <laughs> I mean, nobody kills anyone. Even if they want to, they, their intention is found out and it's stopped. Do you understand that? It's impossible for anyone to be murdered on our planet because the intention is already... If there's an intention, it's, it's out there. We know it. And we can stop it immediately. And that is part of what our culture does to help each other. So, How do you help the sick? There is very little sickness, but we do have, do have illness. Um, they bring them to a, a specific place, like you would call a hospital, but it, we have a cure for most everything, so it doesn't take long for them to be back on, in circulation. Is there a transition where you are? Transition in what sense? And when, like we, we, when we physically die, we, we, we transfer. Oh, no, your soul. We have souls. <laughs> we have souls. <laughs> I'm not laughing at you. I know. You. <laughs> we have souls. Yes. Um, we and we go to a higher place as well. We have spirit guides as well as you have spirit guides. We have higher selves as well as you have higher selves. We have past lives like you have past lives. Um, when, you, when you look out at our group, we, we're known as the Emissaries of Light. Oh, very good. And when we have been together like 15 or 16 years. Yes. All of us. When you look out at us around the room, what do you see? I see a higher vibration than I saw last time. But I, I see a lot of love between you. I see a lot of sharing and giving. I see a lot of talent. Am I right? Yes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you are good souls. And that's why I'm so free tonight. I feel very free tonight because I feel very high energy here. I feel very high vibration here. And you must understand, I deal well, very well in high vibration. And I do not deal very well with low vibration. I have to confess. In low vibration, I get out of sorts, as you would say. Can you tell us more about your bodies in the sense that ours are very fragile? Which kind of leads into the money thing in a way. We have to keep eating and drinking and oh, yes. washing. And <laughs> you will have all of that. You will have all that. Um, our bodies, we have similar organs. They do similar things. They're not exactly the same. They're smaller. I'm smaller. I'm only like five foot one or two by your standards, I'm not even sure, very short. Um, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh good, I have someone that I can be taller than. <laughs> um, thank you. I feel manly now. <laughs> We have two genders like we do? Yes, we Male do. And female? Yes. I need to drink in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> All right, is she drinking water? <laughs> <laughs> yes, water. <laughs> so, what was I saying? Oh, our bodies. Yeah. We're smaller. We have little blue bodies. We look like as I said last time, we look like little gingerbread boys or, and girls because we're sort of bulbous in, in, in our appearance. But I find that quite attractive.
But, um, of course I would. <laughs> but, uh, Does the whole planet look like that, or do you have oh, different we have colors? Some, yeah, we have a couple shades of blue, yes, and a, a silvery blue, and, um, we have different races, okay. like you do, but we all get along very well, and some of the races are rare, I mean, like, a child is born that's maybe silvery blue, and that's not quite normal, but it's accepted as a special child. So, we, it's always positive. It's always positive. So, and we let them know that. You mentioned that uh, we will be like, like you in a way. Have you seen Not what you. happens to humans when they get to the fourth dimension? What is the change? What is the physiology of the fourth dimensional? I've only sapiens? ever seen one go to the fourth dimension, and he had been prepared for several years to go to the fourth dimension and he still couldn't walk through walls but he could exist there but mm -hmm. he couldn't become completely fourth dimensional he um but he was it was very enlightening for him and it was a very a very cool thing so so the closest to the four dimensional homo sapiens will be pleiadians yes and Are they go talking? through walls only if we let them no, I'm just teasing. <laughs> Actually, they have dimensional travel, which is like walking through a wall. But in the, on their planet, they do not. Their society prefers not to walk through walls. They find it a privacy issue. Uh -huh. So they do not walk through walls. They can if they want, but they have rules and regulations that say. We don't think that that's a good idea. And what happens to people who violate those rules? They're, I can't really say they're punished, because they really aren't punished. They're like given a time out. But um, they are, I, I don't know what the word is. What would the word be? Reprimanded. Hmm? They're... Per, perhaps reprimanded, it's, uh, but uh, th it doesn't happen often. They, we guard our rules, they guard their rules, you know, and people are happy with the rules because they wouldn't want people to walk in on them, so, because the Pleiadians are private people. The Blues are a little less private. We, 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 we don't quite understand the privacy issue, but you know, <laughs> but we do respect it. So mm. you have privacy issues down here, oh, big time. So big time, right? Yeah, big time privacy <laughs> issues down here for for sure. So yeah, because I tried that. Yeah, well, it, it didn't work then. So is your climate constant enough that you need to wear clothes? Um, some of us wear clothes. It's it's mostly clothes are for ceremonies. We have lots of different ceremonies that we like to do. And um, whenever someone reaches a higher level of, of, uh, of uh, in society, there's a ceremony when, you know, in their particular groups. And, and so there's always ceremonies and celebrations going on on our planet. So it's a very happy place. So. <laughs> we, in fact, the, I couldn't come talk to Max one day because we were having a ceremony, so. <laughs> oh, somebody was promoted and we just, I couldn't go. I said, Sorry, Max, can't come. <laughs> but we do wear clothes uh, sometimes, um, mostly just the bottom parts of clothes, like you have bottom parts of your clothing. Um, ceremonial is much, much more dressy. Much more colorful. We like color, especially blue. But, uh, <laughs> but seriously, we like other colors too. So, okay. what can we do to assist ourselves and the planet to transition for this uh, crash, to, so that we can all kind of glide through it easier? Learn about it. Um, there are many places online where you can find things that are coming. Yu-Gi-Oh! has some things. 
you'll notice all the sightings and the crop circles. There, some of those crop circles are not real, but others with the radioactive emissions and things of that nature, those are real and they send a message and they send actually vibrations. If you didn't know, if you put some of these crop circle messages together, they spell out almost a song. It's different tones, but it's algorithm tones which are mathematical and they come through these crop circles and they are actually messages in algorithmic tones, okay? And if your planet, which some on your planet have figured out but are being totally ignored, have figured out what these crop circle tones are saying, they're actually a warning from some species that will not get involved in planetary contact. But they will get involved with sending you a message and sending the world a, a warning and telling them who to look out for and what what all's going on. So, but at this point, they're too uh, mysterious for humanity to figure out completely, but some people have. And those people are enlightened people. So, they understand, they're open to it, they're open to the vibration of it. It all has to do with vibration and bringing the vibration of the earth up. So. Is that what the crop circles are for? Is to give us a message to bring our vibrations up? What Part of it, it, yes. It's also, it's also a warning against what, what evils exist that are coming against the vibration, the higher vibrations. But the higher vibrations are within the circles. So, it's hard to me to put down in words exactly what I'm trying to say, but I, I didn't even say that right. But, um, whatever. The question of the world. Who built the pyramids? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's for me to know and you to find out. <laughs> it's always the answer. It has to be that way. Yes. It has to be that way. I'm sorry. I know who did that, but I, I cannot tell you because... I'd be sorry. That's... Is there something underneath the pyramids? Oh, yes. Deep and darker than anything we know. And will it escape? Um, it's not what, it's not where you're going, no, no, not there. There is something under them, and there is something there, but it's not what you're thinking, no, not that. Can you travel through or manipulate time? Yes. There's three kinds of time. There's linear time, there's chaotic time, and there's circular time. We know of all these times, and there's rules and laws administer to protect us from these kinds of times, but there is no laws for linear time. We are in linear time right now, okay? This yeah. is linear time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, chaotic time and, and uh, circular time are much different, and a circular time is um, a location device, can be used as a location device to move from one place to another, actually. So, um, but You'll know that someday. So. Is it easier to be aware of that? There's a time warp on the yes. land behind the house here. Is that a good place to go to experience different times? Yes, if you're the if you have the correct mindset for that. Yes. Uh, there is folded time also. Are there time keepers? Um. Yes and no. A timekeeper is someone that would make the rules for the time. And timekeepers are on each different level of experience with time. Does that make sense to you? It makes sense to me. I don't know if it makes sense to everybody. But, but yes. there are timekeepers in each dimension of time understanding. Okay? Of time perception. understanding. And, um, 
they have very strict rules about these because you can really destroy civilizations time. with time manipulation. And um, they're only permitted to move back in time a very short period and move forward in time a very short period because anything else which has been, anything else would be very destructive. Um, but other people have done it and that's the kind of, but these are malevolent creatures. So, um, and they do attack Earth at, at times in very, very subtle ways so that you don't know that they're even around, but they manipulate productivity. Did you ever have a day when every single person that you met said, oh, I'm so tired today. Did you ever have a day like that where every single person that you met said that? That's, that's an attack by aliens to reduce productivity on Earth. And you would just think that you're, everybody's tired that day, but it's not. It's, it's actually an attack on society. Everybody's like draining off our energy. They're draining off your energy. And you know what? No one can stop it. But until it starts, and then they can stop it, because they never know what's going to happen. Away. So they, it's, it's quite interesting. But all right, I could go on and on about that. But <laughs> why do they want our energy? Uh, there are some species that want this planet for its value in minerals and other things, frightening things, but we are protecting as much as we can. I would say the Dees Dues, the Tekers, the Tepes, the, those, and the angels. Angels are around us. Mm -hmm. They are protecting. And um, they can get a shot in now and then, but we're there's so many species interested in the well-being of this planet that they, the uh, bad, the people that are uh, malevolent are having a hard time getting anything done. Can I ask a personal question? Oh, sure. Don't make me blush green. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing a, a, a Reiki treatment on Max a little while ago, and I ran into what identified itself to me as a guardian. Yes. And it was just simply letting me know that it was none of my business what was there. Mm -hmm. And that that was a life purpose for him. Yes. Is there anything else I can do to help him accelerate the work that he needs to do to get past that? You can um, actually just, when you meditate, do you become one with everything around you? Is that the, how you do it? Mm -hmm. It starts right there, at, right in the physical moment, and I expand to the house and then the neighborhood. And well, you the can city, ex and then the country, and then the oceans and the mountains and the whole earth, and yeah, and then it, and then the uni and then it goes vast. Uh, yeah, I I do don't you, usually have enough time to go too far. <laughs> but but yes. those kind of meditations help everyone. So if you continue to do those kind of meditations, you help not only yourself, but everyone, because it goes out as a connection with those people around you. Even though you may not feel it, but your intention is connected to light workers everywhere. Yeah. And do you know that light workers, the, the positivity that light workers give is cumulative? Two light workers together can be more powerful than five bad guys, if you want to say it that way. The light overcomes. Just like the sunlight takes away darkness. The light shines through the darkness. That's right. The darkness, shall never the darkness is destroyed with light. So if you stay in the light, how can you be destroyed? Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the darkness can't get to you. Not in a way that is viable. You might be able to get to this foot or your left ear. Or, well, that's right, isn't it? But anyway, but he can't control. You see, the, that's a part of the 
ascension is to take control of negativity. Oh, I cannot stay much longer. It's been a delight talking to you. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. I wish you all blessings. To you also. I wish blessings to you. Please, peace. Hmm. Hello. Hi. <laughs> and how do you feel? Good. 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 <laughs> good. I feel very good. So do we. Good. Call me a finger good now. I have uh, five so far. <laughs> <laughs> Where have you been? I don't know where that is. I can hear a little bit, but it's sort of muffled. It's um, it's like off to the side in a, a room next to a door that I can listen through, or something like that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I would say my kid did very good. When he got tired, when you got tired, we both got tired. I felt that there is some gym coming through like cash. Maybe five percent of Jim, uh, but it wasn't that. It was just you know, like she allowed Jim to speak when he like couldn't control the situation. Much. Not much, just you know, just a little bit. Well, yeah, I'm a little tired, <laughs> but I feel good. Mm -hmm. But I feel good. Mm -hmm. He entered through all seven of your major chakras. I'm certain of it. Hmm. He entered. Yes, he at does. At the same time, really weird. At the same, all of his and equally seven went in. Yes. And, and yeah, wow. <laughs> I'm not used to seeing things like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. I hope he was entertaining and useful and thoughtful. And <laughs> Very good. Yes, he was. He was entertaining. Yes. <laughs> he was entertaining. Yes, he was entertaining, educational. Oh, very, very much educated. Oh, yes. good. Has he channeled through you before? Yes. Okay. Lakesh usually talks to Max. Mm -hmm. And he also talked to one other lady named Mary. Talked to Mary for a while. Mary Walker. Yeah, we have uh, formal relationships with uh, our friends who are on orbit, and, and Lakesh is on the side, and he kind of uh, fills in background. These guys are busy and he is, has more free time to speak to us. To me. So Max, you can channel also? Good question. Uh, not, not in the way Jim does, no. Uh, I can do a little bit of uh, yes. psychic work, but it's more like... I never hear a direct voice. I see some, some cartoons in my head, but I never know where from the day do they mm. come. Yes. So that's my best. Okay. I know the, the best way of communicating to me is by crushing my computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, now I get it, you know, if, uh, you know, I get the message, this program has crashed, I know I have to stop and do something else. Yes, yes. <laughs> Would you mind if I ask, what nationality are you? I'm a Russian Jew. Oh, Russian, okay. Russian Jew. I don't know why I thought you were from Bosnia. Yeah. Uh, my Jewish ancestors were from Romania. Okay. Moldavia. But, you know, it's close, but not exactly there. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rumor says, Max, you're a hybrid, you're half uh, and half something else, uh, just a rumor? 
I, I'm, I'm said so by uh, multiple, and I'm certainly a son of my parents, that's for sure. <laughs> and my parents are clearly the children of uh, their parents. And uh, I'm sure I was, you know, I felt in okay in my sleep. I feel from from a childhood very often, you know, even last night I felt gliding. Oh. I glide like in that position, like and I have to kind of hold myself in there, otherwise I would fall. So I'm glad I was gliding you know, last night and all very often. And then I discovered that. A grace glide, some of the grace glides. So I, I was excited. I thought that I was a great past life, or I have a great DNA. Mm -hmm. So, so it doesn't seem like the, my 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 contacts don't confirm that they, they don't see any don't see any great DNA, and I don't see any great past lives. Maybe a future lives, but not past lives. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of my insight. Uh, but um, you know, they they say that I have a you know ancient Pleiadian DNA, which which, you know, is possible. Also red hair, blonde hair, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's oh, through yes. my mind. My, my yes. yes. so, so that can, could be play, play, um, you know, I don't yes, have a, that could be play, uh, I, I don't have a, a good, but you know, knowing that you are always a, a in Russia you say a, a white crow, you know, out, out of the, you know, in any company I feel a little bit out, even among Jews, even among Russian Jews, even among Russian, even among American, I, I feel outsider, so, so, so that that was feeling always there, and yeah, also I like right. to be on uh, on the other side of the of the selling counter. I want to be insider also, outsider yes. and insider. You know that that's that's a mix. Okay. Yes. All right, I have an announcement. Interesting. Um, okay. So there were two events, historical events, where we, uh, we Jim and I participated. First, creation of human colonies. Now there are three human colonies which they organized using our advice. So, you know, if we cannot have contact down here, I suggest to take us, take my family and dogs and chickens up there and we will, uh, we will you know, have contact up there. And they say, no, we can't take you now, we will consider your application. But they took others. So, about 30 people have been up there. There are three colonies at the moment. I call them colonies, they call them other way, you know, encampments or, you know, teams which communicate with, with, uh, with them uh, on the on orbit or, uh, they don't tell where, but uh, somewhere close. And the cache confirmed it's third dimension, so they have to go down a dimension just to, to be with, with the humans. Yes. And it happened already for several months, there were bumps up and down, but in general, the major breakthrough is some of the humans, they found some telepaths, so they have, you know, for them the telepathic contact is, is most important because they don't understand us otherwise. They hear the voice, they translate, you know, they have automatic translation, they can't relate to that until they get telepathic messages. And when they get telepathic messages, they understand a lot. So it exponentially, the understanding is exponentially growing. Have you asked about the pituitary gland? Yes, yes, yes. Um, what do you want to they confirm, mainly confirm, uh, they don't confirm that, they don't confirm that, that it is a third of, eye. They is don't that say, part of evolution that's occurring oh. so rapidly in people? Mm. They, I mean, it's mutating almost, right? Mm -hmm. Well, because of the way the magnetics are hitting the earth and, mm -hmm. and all the shifts and change. Oh my God, okay. it makes total sense. They didn't, wasn't that specific on pituitary. Uh, I know some, but, but they weren't that specific. Uh, Bashar is more specific on Pituitary, but I don't want to pollute that conversation with another conversation. Uh, yes, so, so <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> Way too many questions. <laughs> no, no, no. That's what we're here to learn and be enlightened, yes, and yes, that's the most important thing about this is to just share the uh, the positive energy that that they share. That I find so I feel so much better the next day. It's like ah, yes. you know, I'm so glad that they used me or whatever but it's 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 so different because it's they're there inside you and yet you really can't feel them except for when they work with your body yes so <laughs> it's very odd if you had the opportunity to go to their planet would you go yes i would i would definitely but, go. yes you said that 
so emphatically. <laughs> yes, I would go. I would definitely well, go. You honestly trust you. Obviously, oh, yes. trust yes. them because you let them take That's over your body. Yeah. Oh yes, I trust them. Yes, because I am. I have a degree in theology, which is study of God, and for many years. They have been trying to get in contact with me, but I didn't understand what was going on. I had no clue until I discovered Reiki and started giving my Reiki energy to other people and moving, letting energy yeah. flow through yeah. me yeah. and out of me. And then, and it's only the then, was I able to chakras. experience... No, it's the... Yeah. Keep it. You mm -hmm. breathe in your chakras, right. different, all of them at this no, no, yeah. I, and you also all at the same time. Yeah, they were all there, yes. I always thought them up like and down like this, but there's also this way. Yes. It, oh, I, yes. Yeah, I didn't, I've never encountered that. I'm going to practice that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you saw that? Yes. <laughs> yes. When he was breathing, I followed his lead, and I, and I, because breathing should... It, it moves up, yes. It's who you are, and it's mm -hmm. all that you are. And it's always coming in and weaving, weaving, weaving. And I, you know, and I understood what he was asking me to do, but I felt like all of them were opening in the front, too. Sort of like a gateway. Oh, okay. You know, yes. That That's the channeling part. Yes. Oh, I just now understand channeling. Sorry. <laughs> 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 that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Oh my God! <laughs> I feel no big energy. I just got to see that. Oh, and this happens to me during treatments. Yeah. I see the most bizarre things. Yeah. Well, that's cool that you got to see that. That's very cool. <laughs> I'm gonna practice because I know because I thought I felt mine open too. Yes. <laughs> well, I did. Yeah. The last time I channeled, they felt Lakesh in the room before yeah. he came in. Yeah. He, they could feel him coming through the. I, I heard some people say that. I saw something. Yeah, they so they, they felt him coming yeah, through the room. It was energy pulsing. That's all I could see. Yeah, the and pulsing. he come came through the room, and some people commented to me afterwards that they felt him come by before he came. Just as he came in, they felt him come by. So, um, and he comes in straight in. Right straight in, true. so... I know. It was a little alarming. Yes. I thought I saw him, and I think I did too. Yeah. <laughs> I was a little nervous. It's coming straight in. I mean, yeah. sure, part of it's the crown, that's the... Yeah. But the it's like... Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it, just right in. Yeah. First it was Gahil coming. Gahil is our... Gahil is the angel. Friend angel. And he only comes, he doesn't ask... People don't ask him questions. He comes to tell you something. Gahil that's is it. an angel? Yes. Yes. Gahil is an angel and he comes to tell you things and he does not have a conversation with you. He just Oh, he did a conversation with me. Oh yeah, man. yes he did. Oh, but I usually mean, if he comes, yeah. it's just to tell you something and then he's gone. It's I just called, didn't let it's called a fleeting thought. I didn't yeah. let him speak first because I had too many questions. I didn't know that he came with a message. So I, you know, questioned him for about, you know, ten minutes and, until finally I said, Did he come with a message? And said, yeah, that's why I came. <laughs> And uh, basically, I had, you know, I lowered his energy a lot, but, you know, he was patient and answered all the questions. And Oh, yeah, that's right. You did do it. You it was nice to learn about angels. Now I'm into angelology. He said that angels are not born, are not born, no. born. they are made. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they're made by, by God. Yes. Mm -hmm. to, and, you know, as I understand, this kind of angel was specially made to help humans. Yes. And they're messengers, basically messengers of God. Mm -hmm. The main discovery was, you know, I said, you know, oh, a scientific you know, question, how do you communicate with God? I, you know, you're possibly the closest to God, so how does he look to you or it look, looks to you? So he said, we hear directly from God, they can hear God, but when they need to communicate something, they pray. So the angels pray to God in their angelic language, and actually I heard the angelic language. Many, many hear, hear like Yash also heard the language, which sounds very, very much like human language. Yes. So they pray too, and their prayers to humans are are very healing. Mm -hmm. So we, we had a, a, an angel come in and uh, he gave us blessings. So that was was. I had some people see the angel behind me a couple different times. Yeah. 
and he asked us to teach you to do it. Right? Super realistic. I've never seen them so realistic looking. Yeah, and they're moving and. Oh, you're seeing them? Yes. yes. <laughs> they're just super, I've super had people look at me and say there's an angel behind right you. Now. And usually it's a And they describe him to me. Yeah. Did you see so. the hill? Peter, did you see the hill? I'm sorry. I, 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 <laughs> yeah, well, I'm seeing one particular here, but there's others that are in the room. But Yeah, there's more. Super, there's can you describe? Well, it's, it's, all, it's all in shades of white. Yes. Uh -huh. And brilliant, brilliant white, and a, a bit of gold outlining. So, it, you know, depending on, and you can't look at it directly. You have to look at the angel, like, like, um, out of the corner of your peripheral eye. Peripheral vision. Yeah. Mm, peripheral. Yeah. Peripheral. Yeah. The peripheral well, vision is know. when you can see it the Does most. Does anybody know through, Cookie? And they become super realistic. Yeah. Lady Cookie, one a lady named Cookie. Yes. Mm -hmm. She actually, the first time she met me, she said, "I see an angel behind you," and she described the angel to me, and she said the angel turned around and showed her his wings. So, yeah. And um, she was like going, "Wow, he's like two feet taller than you." So he's the angels are very That's huge, very huge, Just very large beings. Me. They're very, they're <laughs> giants of individuals. So. Oh, come on, it's just my reflection. Come it's on. Just, that's, that's, what do you think? She said it's just her reflection. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? What did you say? Oh. So, so what we heard tonight, apparently their planet has a heavier gravity than ours. If, if, if it's common for the men to be five feet tall. Yes, there's their planets are very large. It would be large, larger diameter planet. Yeah, very, very large planets from what I understand. I didn't ask that question. I don't know. Have you ever asked them what the population of this planet is? Trillions. Is trillions. 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 Well, four planets have trillions. Yes. Wow. But they're small and they're big planets, so. <laughs> and they're so they have a lot of people there. And he, he were tried to explain his habitat one time. I don't remember what it was though. I don't remember what it looked like. But oh, well. I feel a lot of energy around, but I don't know if anybody else is going to come in or uh... So the next uh, thing that happened um, a couple of days ago, basically they asked, oh. for the colonies, they asked, how do they find more volunteers? Because for them to find, so I request, I kind of was adamant that volunteers have to volunteer. They can't be taken with, without consent. So, you know. And for Which them they to, used to, do. to obtain the, the consent is difficult because they're not allowed to do much. Uh, there are limitations by you know, their overseers that uh, they can't really expose themselves. So they have to go through channelers and through telepaths and through psychics. It's just hard. So finally, uh, you know, when they asked me recently, they, uh, I said, how about, you know, you go to YouTube and just watch the, for the channels. There's lots of channels on YouTube, and you pick the ones which you like. And then I decided, how about I just create an email? They can check email. They don't answer email, but they, they certainly can check email. I, I created emails for for the angel, for the Lakesh, and for a few other guys, a few our friends, and. Uh, and they check. Not always. Sometimes I have to remind them. I speak to to Jim and through Jim and say, "Did you check him?" Oh, he said, "I was busy. I celebrated stuff." So, check my. And then <laughs> next time he said, "I checked your email and and I'll answer it." So, and I don't need password to check the email. So I I created an email for them to for volunteers to to submit their applications, and the application can be free format basically. Uh, how, how sure you are that you want to help? You know, how long can you go? Can you go by yourself or you need uh, you know, somebody else or a pet to go with you? And, uh, and how, how do you think you can help? And you know, different sorts of help are needed, especially global, global thinking is very important because you know, lots of people are, can think only that little and you know, they can solve big problems. And they, you know, first volunteers came, like few people, very few people, and they gave them global problems, like how to stop a polar shift. People say, I'm, I'm a housewife. <laughs> Where should they go? <laughs> yeah, but that's what we are working on. 
and things. You know, how to, to remove the money? Oh, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a possible question, how, how to, to get rid of the money. So that's their questions they're solving. And uh, so I created email, and I announced it somewhere, and I created a website. So email is sign up to go at gmail.com, and the website is humancolony.org. And in about one day, we got about under 30 volunteers already signed up. That was amazing. <laughs> There's a lot of people out there that want to go yes. Yes. visit off-world. And all of them were very honest and straightforward and you know, just put their heart into the application. And when they do take people off-world, sometimes they're only gone for what seems to be an hour, but they're actually in the colony for days because of how they can manipulate dimensions and time. Because they don't want people to know that they're taking they get permission, but they don't want people to know that they're taking people because it's it would be very disruptive. <laughs> so they do it in the least disruptive way possible. Interdimensional travel, which can give you um, five days here and five minutes there. So it's um, they're very interesting. I, I just find it fascinating all the things they can do. So. Oh, well, thank you all. Is anybody I, else coming? I don't know. <laughs> how, how, how do you feel? Can, can you? Uh, Should you? Try? I don't know. It's up to you. If nobody's coming, that's fine. Well, I, I sense there's a lot of different things around. I don't know if they want to come in. I just sense them around. Well, do you want to ask the Indians if they have it? Oh, yes. I'll ask the Indians. Okay, hold on. Yeah, and also we need to thank the Indians for the. Oh, thank you. Energy. Yes. Um, well, let me... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. You must feel the energy of our sacred space with love, with respect, with much good thoughts. We have been here many hundreds of years, and this is one of our sacred areas. Welcome. Oh, right. yeah. That's not necessary. Oh. <laughs> I think it splashes the air with kind of waves of energy. Oh, yes, thank yes. you. Yes. I thank you for coming. Yes. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Very enlightening. Ooh.